With the help of a late fall sun, the shadows creep into Sullivan Stadium where this crowd now watching a 14-10 Boston College lead. 14-10 as we start the fourth quarter. Dombrowski is in. He turned Flutie as far side. Darren, the brother, he's a freshman. There's the main man, and he is bumped out of bounds at the 26-yard line. What a resilient little guy. An inch is tall, but my, is he resilient. You want to know about what happened? Well, after three yards rushing, BC has been on the ground. Yards passing, a little difference. And total yardage, BC controlling, and they have a four-point lead. But you're used to seeing a lot more passing yards than that. BC unable to go against one of the toughest pass defenses in the country. Phelan and Martin to the wideouts. Martin in motion to the far side. Still going. And down. Rudy Reed and Ron Hobby. But he can take a lick, can he? Everybody going left. Flutie going right on the bootleg. It is pass run, but he sees it early that he's got a lot of speed. Watch the block by 82, Kelvin Martin. Gets a man down, keeps Flutie from being hit full on. Flutie goes through, tucks the ball in, moves all the way down to midfield. And uh, Flutie, despite the fact that he's had a few shoulder problems, has been asked by his coach not to run. It's what we said at halftime. They're going to have to get him to the outside to move the ball against this defense. 23 yards in that run for Flutie. Ken Bell inside the 50 and down to the 48-yard line. 14-18, it's ticking, we're in the fourth quarter. Ken Back Bell, Dombrowski, Strahan, you see them there in your picture. Yes, indeed. As long as that dog is, are also as long as the records that Doug Flutie has contributed to Boston College. Long on life and long on football. So far, rushing-wise, 53 yards. That's good. He is used to losing yards on the rush. He scrambles so often. Ken Bell. Still going. Vic Bellamy finally, but Ron Hobby had him and lost him. I'll tell you, Eddie, I never would have imagined that uh, BC's rushing game would have outgained their passing game, nor would I have thought BC could pick up over 200 yards rushing against this Syracuse defense that did such a job bottling up that very powerful Nebraska Cornhusker rushing game. But that's happened today. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Again, they go to the ground. And it's Ken Bell to the 25. The two things we talked about coming out of the halftime intermission uh, before the third quarter was would they go more to the rushing game and would they go to the tight end? They've done both, and it's been successful for Jack Bicknell. And against Doug Flutie's wishes, I'm sure, because Kyle, as you remember, last week in their game, they went to the rush to conserve time and hold the ball, and Flutie was not happy about it in the fourth quarter. Well, that was because the BC defense was just unable to stop Army in the second half. So they wanted to stall and have a ball control game. Second and seven, Bell in motion. Strahan. I think we've got a penalty, though. Illegal use of the hands is going to be my guess against BC. He got himself some running room. The officials talking about it with 12.38 to play here in the fourth quarter. BC by four. That's a holding call coming up against BC. What is that, 45 yards against Boston College for the day, penalties? That's correct. Nick McPherson now on the discussion. And there really isn't much to discuss. They're going to take it back. BC starting to breathe heavily. Holding. Offense. Repeat second down. Oh, they're going to try that second down again. Second and 17 at the 35-yard line for the Eagles. Gerard Phelan to the near side. Sean Dombrowski and Darren Flutie are in twin sets on the far side. Lee and Bellamy over to guard the twin receivers. Bruce and Hobby to the near side. No sooner got possession of the ball and Tim Green. Boy, if he's not an All-American, I don't know who is. He is as good a defensive player as I've seen all year, Kyle. And 
Remember that game against Nebraska? He was sensational. Well, when uh, BC came to the line of scrimmage, Syracuse defensive line switched around and uh, changed up the blocking call for the BC offensive line. Look at that rushing yard. As we said, BC over 200 yards. Third down and 21. They're six for 13 on third down conversion. They have five backs in there now defensively. And the little man's done it again. on the outside. I love a guy who wants the ball in pressure situations. He doesn't mind running with it against those big guys. What a block by number 20, Gerard Bailey, number 20. He held that defensive back all the way back in that defensive backfield to give Flutie some distance. Region and Bardwell with a couple of good contained blocks on Green to allow Flutie the big run. First and 10 from the 11. Ken Bell. He gets to the 10 and no further. Picks up one, Ted Gregory, the nose guard. 11.22, meanwhile, that clock continues to roll. And while Boston College is chewing up yards on the ground, the clock is moving along, and there's Doug Flutie on the ground. I don't know who's more popular in Boston these days, here, Larry Bird, but I tell you, it would be a standoff. Well, after Larry Bird picked up on uh, Dr. J last week, you gotta give it to Flutie, and 60,000 60, people here would attest to that. Second down and nine, all on the 10-yard line. 10.50 and ticking to play. Strahan trying to go to the middle, and Gregory again. Now they're testing this outstanding Syracuse defense and they're going right at the gut right now to try and pick up those big yards. When they've done well, it's when they've set it up a, themselves in a passing down and they've run, or when they've let Flutie go outside on a pass run option. Let's see what they do here in third and along. My guess again is gonna be a rollout option for Flutie. Doug Flutie who lost 14 yards rushing against Syracuse last year on a third nine. What will he do? Uneven line, five players to the left side. And they go to the strength, but it's not enough. Boy, I'm telling you, you talk about inspiration on both sides of the football. Ken Bell trying. Stratford, of course, unable to come back because he pulled up on that last touchdown run. And now you've got a fourth and nine, and the clock's still moving. Kevin Snow will have to come in here to try and add three and make it a seven-point difference. But that's not what Jack Bicknell wanted. He missed from the 46-yard line. And that came earlier. But not this time. He's got himself a 25-yard field goal attempt. And so with 9.25 to play in the fourth quarter, this is some game. It's Boston College 17, Syracuse 10. It was moving day. Things were going great. Until the moving truck died at the toll booth gate. The troopers were glaring. Tempers were flaring. Do I hear swearing? What's more, it started to pour. The tow truck came and we gave a cheer. Then the couch slid out the rear. Oh. Now I know rider trucks are newer. They're tougher, they're strong. And driving a bargain sure didn't pay. So next time I'll think this way it's rider or it's wrong. <laughs> This Remington Microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Look, no cord. It's rechargeable. It never needs a cord because this convenient charger stand keeps it continually charged. The Remington Microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Here's why. The first screen shaves incredibly close. The second screen even closer. The Remington Microscreen Rechargeable Shaver shaves as close as a blade or your money back. And the Lady Remington Rechargeable, the perfect gift, shaves without a cord. So Boston College has added three more points. And they have been successful the last few times they've had their hands in the football. This time 75 yards and 11 plays and a little over 550. And the 25-yard field goal with a man that is kicking off right now. 
This will be Snow kicking to Gaden and Covington. Into the wind's going to come up short. And out to the 25-yard line is Jamie Covington. The hard runner from the Queens. I think, Eddie, the, the real telling statistic here when you come into this ball game is that Boston College has never this season scored under 20 points a ball game, and Syracuse has never allowed over 21 points a ball game. And also factor in the fact that the fourth quarter offensively has been the quarter for Syracuse this year. They run a wing out of the eye formation. Siano and Schwedes are the split receivers. That's Kometz. And at the 35-yard line, it's Todd Russell wrapping up Mike Siano. A completed pass. We haven't seen him throw that much, but the youngster Siano doing a good job. And here's a repeat of that scoring drive we told you about. Snow on the 25-yard field goal. And it's 17 to 10 Boston College. Last year it was 21 10 Syracuse. Traditionally, they've not been high scoring games, at least over the last few years since McPherson, the man you're looking at right there, and Vic Nell have become respective coaches of Syracuse and Boston College. Under nine to play, Seattle in motion. Covington to the 43 yard line. David Thomas, outside linebacker, pulls him down. Romanowski was also there. Well, BC satisfied with the field goal, but I'm sure very disappointed as we take a look at Jamie Covington, top tailback for Syracuse, but with, the, uh, with another touchdown at that point would cause Syracuse to have to score at least twice to come back, but here Syracuse can score, get a two-point conversion and take the lead. The Boston mascot trying to peck away in the helmets of Syracuse as offensively commits now on the option rollout. Commits carrying. Down line pursuit by Peter Holy, the linebacker on that side. And Boston College now faced with a situation where Syracuse has just picked up another first down. First and 10, ball at the 43-yard line. The 11th first down for Syracuse and commits today. That's a little bit deceptive because he, he's been caught for some losses on a, on a few passing downs. But when he's running with the ball, he's, he's pretty good. Pitch back. And Covington going to the far side. Well, he does not have the first down. I must tell you that there have been some outstanding blocks thrown by the people up front. Offensive lines on both sides have done a good job here today. They've gotten out in front of the runs, done a good job as far as pass blocking is concerned. Well, that win just took my breath away. <laughs> Whoa. Just got hit with about a 50-mile-an-hour wind. 17-10, Seattle in motion. He does not get it. Whistle blows. Covington. Loose change, but it won't count. John Bosa, who started his career as an offensive guard. They have him on the defense now. He's number 97. And he was at the bottom of that one. The penetration by Ruth. First, 82. Pushes aside the center. Gets penetration in the backfield. Forces a change of direction for Covington. And allows his partners to... Make the stop right at about the line of scrimmage. Big one, third down and three. BC fans want the defense to hold. Seven minutes to play. It will be very close. You got a yellow flag, though. It will be very close. Romanowski there, Thomas is there, Harrington there for BC. Holding on the offense. I think he was close enough for the first down. I think he would have had it, Eddie. I think he was too, Kyle. Boy, does that hurt. Mm. Now, that's another one of the points that we want to make. This is a big penalty right here for Syracuse. Got Ten yards on the call. Holding. Offense. Repeat. Third down. Repeat the third down. McPherson talking with his offensive specialist, his coordinator right there. 17-10. 
They had some snow flurries here in the Foxborough area this morning. I got a feeling we're going to see some more here this afternoon. It is really starting to get chilly again. 17-10, BC with the lead, Syracuse with the ball. Third down and 13 from the 45. Deep post, and a flag. It could be offensive pass interference. Yeah, anytime the referee runs all the way back like that, it's gonna be against the offense. Take a look, the ball, they picked on Neil Leighton all day long. Eighton's the one who's given up two long passes. He's number 43 for Boston College. There's the pass. This time the push in the small of the back. The ball will come right into Eighton's grasp. Hits him in the hands. And the push. So we're going to have a punting down for Syracuse. That'll bring on Jim Fox. My, you talk about two big penalties. The holding penalty that prevented them from getting the first down, which would have enabled them to stay in possession of the ball. And now this penalty here, the offensive pass interference. Let's get it officially from the referee. Offensive pass interference, loss of down. It is now fourth down against the offense. It wasn't only loss of down, they lost distance. And that is good uh, field position information for Boston College because Phelan's only back on his own 30-yard line. Jim Fox to kick. He'll have a little bit of a tailing wind now. It's actually blowing more across. The shadow is starting to crowd in on that playing surface, and half the field now is covered with shadows. And it's getting cooler all the time. Players trying to keep their hands warm. 17-10, BC with the lead, and about to get possession of the ball again. The 22. for more excitement than this. Kelvin Martin, it's been a long time since 1972 that Boston College had run back a punt for a touchdown. Last week, he broke that record, and here the double threat, Kelvin Martin, the man who's number one for Boston College in touchdowns for receiving, obviously number one in touchdowns for punt returns, as he has his second on the year, 79 yards on that for Kelvin Martin, only a sophomore, and he has put Boston College within reach of a major bowl game. It's 23 to 10. Waiting for the official call. I believe it was 78 yards on that return, although it could be 79. And in to kick now, Kevin Snow. And well, he should receive. Congratulations. There he is, Kelvin Martin, the sophomore. He's from Jacksonville, Florida, and he is starting to get used to this cold weather. In fact, he might even be liking it. Big rush by Syracuse, not enough. Last year in the final was Syracuse 21, Boston College 10. This year with 6.04 to play, it's BC 24, Syracuse 10 from Foxborough. Hi, I'm Jim Finnerty, and I hope you'll join us on the next edition of Seeing Stars. Director Brian De Palma has been called the Alfred Hitchcock of the 80s. See why when we take a close-up look at his latest thriller, Body Double. You've seen her in Poltergeist, The Big Chill, Teachers, and now American Dreamer. Meet Jo Beth Williams, Hollywood's hot new leading lady. And preview the sci-fi spoof, The Night of the Comet, on the next Seeing Stars. At 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, on USA. 
today. Back with the keys to get it. We're back in Foxborough at Sullivan Stadium. And yes, this is a sellout crowd. It's been sold out all year long. And this is what brought the sellout crowd to their feet, this touchdown run by Kelvin Martin. Well, it was some great blocks, uh, blocks there by Jarek McPherson, number one, and then Carl Kreshpay, number 35, that really set him free for this long punt return. And uh, there are a lot of images, a lot of things that will be remembered by this capacity crowd. They'll remember the weather for sure. They'll remember the wind. They'll remember it's Doug Flutie's last day. But no doubt that will play a, a very prominent role in the memory banks of all of these fans. That long 78 or 79 yard punt return for Boston College by Kelvin Martin. They'll also remember on the Syracuse side the two penalties that delayed an opportunity to come back and tie the game. The holding call and the offensive pass interference that gave the ball back to Martin in the 78-yard touchdown run. Kicking off, BC. Comes up short. Gaten's got to go back and get it. No one there to help him out. He gets a wall. And out to the 28-yard line. Oh, boy. Just when you think you got him. <laughs> it could have been disastrous for Syracuse. And Gaden will look like he was ready to settle for the ball being down right back there where he got his hands on it until he saw the blocking develop. And now Syracuse with 5.51 and trailing at 24-10. Schwedes, Brodsky, Stevens, Simcoe, Volante, and Marone across their front line. Tate is the tight end. They've got Kmetz, the quarterback, Jamie Covington, and Harold Gaden are the running backs. Andy Hemmer and Peter Holy are the linebackers for BC. That's Kmetz, and that's complete to Big Jim Tate at the 50-yard line. Tony Thurman, the free safety, who is number one in the country and number one career in BC history as far as pass interceptions. Florida 25, Kentucky 17, and they're in the fourth quarter in that one. Penn State trailing Notre Dame, large in the fourth, 34-7. Jerry Faust feeling good about that one, I'm sure. 24-10 here. Oh, what a dandy this has been. That's commence. Almost intercepted by Romanowski. Intended for Swades. And the freshman linebacker was the young man that actually turned this game around in favor of BC with the pass interception that got them their big touchdown, their go-ahead touchdown. How oh about this one? Goodness, Temple over West Virginia, and that does a big deal here in the for Boston College as we look at the Yale Harvard score in the Lambert Trophy balloting this week. Penn State, that is now way behind the Notre Dame, was number one. BC was number two. West Virginia was number three. So not only on the line is a January 1st bowl for BC today, but it's also the Lambert Trophy. Clemson over Maryland, 23-17, in case you didn't see it. Komet's going deep. Swades is there! Russell got beat deep by Scott Schwedes, the sophomore flyer. Schwedes not really known as the deep threat. It's Morciano, the deep threat. But what a pass by Mike Kometz. He lost the ball, gets a real good arc on it, so that it does fall over the shoulder of Todd Russell, number 45, trying to defend. And we're back in here, 5.15 left in the fourth quarter. And Syracuse, not a team known at least until three games ago, is a team with a great uh, offensive unit. That is the longest touchdown pass of the year for Syracuse, 49 yards. Got to call a timeout because there were 12 people on the field for Syracuse. And they'll take one of their three timeouts. Syracuse now with two left. And Boston College with three. And we have 5.15 to play in this one. Oh, yes. Is this fun? I'm telling you. BC 24 and Syracuse 16. Have you driven a Ford? When was the last time you had the kind of car that brings the road alive? Have you driven a Ford? Then you don't know what you're missing. Have you driven Good news, Rich. The 
up another four points. I guess it looks like you're buying lunch, huh? Call me. Hey, hot shot. We got a court at seven. Get plenty of sleep tonight. You're gonna need it. Richard, it's Lisa. Where are you? For those who appreciate the modern art of living, there's Sanyo. The modern art of electronics. I believe Syracuse is going to go for two, Kyle. If they get two, then they stand in a position to win the game with another touchdown and an extra point. If they go for the extra point here, they'd have to score eight if they were to take it in again. This is Kometz. On a keeper. He can't get there. He tried to cut back, and he couldn't do it. And it's Peter Holy, the linebacker. Scott Harrington, one of the down people. And Doug Flutie cheering his defense on the sideline as commits. And this game group from Syracuse coming back now as they try and plot strategy for the final 5-15. Dick McPherson with a few words to his young quarterback trying to build into him a little bit more experience on that option for two points. And clearly, obviously, that was the, the right call as we got some more scores for you, Brown and Columbia. And continue that Penn Cornell game. Lots of Northeast action. Of course, the game starting here very early on the East Coast. Harvard and Yale. Big question there is what are the MIT students going to be doing? <laughs> Remember a couple years ago, they had that balloon uh, blow up on the field. BYU and Utah. BYU watching the strange happenings of last weekend with Washington losing, Texas losing. Indiana every year, yep. as bad as they are, they'll give Purdue a battle, won't they, for that old Oaken bucket? Well, we have 5.15 to play here. And as it sits up on the tee on the 40-yard line, you've got Steve Williams and Ken Bell. Bell on the far side, Williams near, Don McCauley will kick it up. And again, we hearken back to those two big penalties against Syracuse. How much different might it have been had they been able to hang on? Ken Bell! Ken Bell to the 42-yard line. Explosive Ken Bell. Tim Pigeon, a linebacker, tackled and pulled him down. But Bell, with that uh, great speed and his ability to run back, kicks it almost 25 yards per try. That time to the 41-yard line. I'll tell you, that run back was diagrammed the way the coaches wanted. First line of people kick the uh, wide folks out, then they get a wall of four blockers right in front of Ken Bell, and he followed it precisely. Phelan Farr, Martin near side, receiver set up. Bell. And the deep secondary spotted run and came up, and Vic Bellamy had to come from way back. Bellamy was laying way back off the line, and he had to come a long way to make that tackle. Rudy Reed also dropping back. You know, Kyle, this Syracuse defense yields more than 200 yards less than Boston College averages each game. Uh, each, each game. Uh, they give up. Well, they give up about 256 yards a game. BC is averaging about 475 yards. That 256 is fifth in the nation, so they've gone against some very good offensive units this year. One thing that BC is doing, though, to keep the Syracuse defense off balance, which, again, a team like Nebraska was unable to do, is many times running a misdirect, meaning that you got flow going one way, the ball carrier going another, and with Syracuse having good pursuit, means they don't have quite as many people around the ball when it crosses the uh, the line of scrimmage. 4.08 to play in the ball game. 24-16 BC with possession of the ball. They stay on the ground. Third and three. Ken Bell. Over the 50 to the 49 yard line. David Lee, number 20, comes away. Syracuse did a good job. They. Uh, and that team tackling were able to knock him sideways. I don't think he got the first down because of that. Had he fallen forward, it would be a first down. It's going to set up a fourth down situation. This is a big one here. Do they give up possession of the ball? They lead by eight. South Carolina and Navy. Are you incredible? Can you believe that? No. Navy was beaten 29 to nothing last week. We're going to double check on that score just to make sure. Navy defeated 29 to nothing last week by Syracuse. A big shutout for the Orange defense. But here today, they can't hold as BC has it 24-16 with 3.36 to play. The new American Business Morning. 
faster, more fleeting, with time more precious. And UPS is there, meeting the challenge every business day. It's UPS Next Day Air, and that means getting it there. Keeping pace with morning deliveries to more people and more places than ever before. UPS Next Day Air. Morning, morning, morning. UPS Next Day Air. Getting it there every business morning. Getting it there. Venture into the exotic world of leather and lace and hail the legacy of John Lennon with the music of his son Julian on Night Flight in stereo at 11 Eastern on USA tonight. Louder than words. USA's College Football 84. Well, we can only hope that we have this kind of a game next week when USA Sports travels to Waco, Texas. College Football 84 will bring you the Longhorns of Texas against the Baylor Bears. Game time at 12.30 Eastern. College Football 84 on USA. 3.36 to play. BC 24, Syracuse 16 to kick. BC the fourth and one a bad kick and Syracuse elects to let it roll rather than risk a chance of losing the ball so they'll put it in play at the 19 yard line it's a long way to pay dirt for Syracuse but if they come up with another big play like that last touchdown on the pass to Scott Schweides they'd be right back in the game had some interesting games around the country today 24-16 here. Temple and West Virginia in a good game. We'll try and get that score to you. Covington, Gaden, the running backs. Schweide split far. Siano to the near side. They've stayed with that combination all day. Mike commits under to the 29-yard line. Or make it the 24-yard line. Jamie Covington. Covington is a pass receiver coming in, had received the ball 24 times for 141 yards this season. No touchdowns. What about that West Virginia game? There it is. Oh, that final. is a final. Oh, you know, BC might be in line for their second Lambert trophy in a row. They've got a win here. They've got Miami ahead also, and that'll be a biggie. Ruth, look at him, number 68. He is incredibly strong. Well, he took two people down. Watch Simcoe, 67, the center right on him. He's got Simcoe in his arms. He's so strong, he keeps Simcoe right there and tackles Harold Gaden before he gets to the line of scrimmage. One way you're not going to beat Mike Ruth is upstairs. you got to get to his legs. Jude 20 to play in the ball game. 24-16, Boston College leading, and Syracuse needs to score badly. That's Mike Kmetz. He needed five. Did he get it? Yep. He sure did. Kmetz and the keeper. Else oh, Kmetz now is good for 33 yards rushing. He has had 16 carries. That's his rushing total for the day. Well, he's a double or two-pronged quarterback. He can pass. He's got a strong arm, and he's run well. As you see, we have less than two minutes. Time not an ally now for Syracuse. This is their last game of the year. BC has two to play. Intercepted by Thurman. And that is the tenth of the year for Tony Thurman. I really feel badly for this young man. He's going to be a superb quarterback before his career is over. Has a great arm, as Eddie told you. As soon as he learns how to read coverages a little bit better, he'll be all right. Here's Mike Siano, number 14, going deep. Got zone coverage, and here comes Tony Thurman across. He's the active all-time career NCAA leader in interceptions. As Eddie told you, that's his 10th on the season. Is already averaging more than one interception per game. That's his for the day. Looks like he's even lost a little bit of hair worrying about keeping that streak going. 24 to 16 with a minute and 43. And Flutie and the Eagles are looking to take another one. 
Ken Bell, tackled by Tim Pigeon and Tim Green. And how you have to feel for a fellow like Tim Green, who has been sensational. He's only a junior, however, so he's got another shot at it next year. Last week, as we had mentioned, this club beat Army, and they did not do it decisively at all. They yielded a lot of yards defensively, but they've clamped down when they've had to today. On the other side, Syracuse shut out their first shot out of the year. They shut off the Navy 29-0. A whistle as they pitch it back. Incidentally, we see what BC has done on the ground today. Last week, Navy only had three yards rushing against Syracuse. So I think that Boston College, by going more to the run, has caught them off guard. And we got a procedure call coming up against Boston College. Boston College today going completely opposite of what you would think. 262 yards rushing, only 136 passing. The call? Dead ball. All start. Offense. The clock should read 106. 106. The scoreboard clock is at 102. Well, they'll have to take it back. Remember, Syracuse, you see only one timeout left. A minute and six seconds left. So 66 seconds and one timeout. If Boston College can uh, just keep the clock from stopping, they're going to be in a great situation, despite the fact that Flutie is going to lose his record of consecutive games of over 250 yards passing. As Eddie told you, uh, well under even the 200-yard mark as the Syracuse secondary has done a good job, but more importantly, the Boston College running game has really uh, done a job today. And you've got to give a lot of credit to that front line for Boston College, a line that uh, they have called... The Secret Service there, the timeouts, as we told you. Secret Service because they've given Doug Flutie presidential-type coverage. Well, today, they've done, known how to penetrate that Syracuse defensive line as they've given Stratford and Strahan lots of running room, too. Ken Bell. Ken Bell to the 47-yard line. The clock continues to roll. It's down to 55, 54, 53 and ticking down to what could be a very big win for Boston College in front of every major bowl recruiter here in the nation. Dick McPherson knows it. Syracuse with only one time on remaining. BC has uh, averaged over 475 yards a game, as we've told you. Today now, just a little over 300 total yards. And most of it has come on the ground. A different departure. And Doug Flutie certainly will not question Coach Jack Bicknell's strategy today, even though last week he was not in agreement with the fact that they ran the ball predominantly in the fourth quarter against the Army. Well, this shows just one more time what all these coaches all over America have been saying about Doug Flutie. You can stop him from passing, perhaps. You can stop him from running, perhaps. And even today, you can stop him statistically. But whether you stop him running, you stop him passing, or you stop him statistically, he's still going to get Boston College into the end zone and he's going to lead this team into victory. 24 to 16. The first turnover by Syracuse in the last four games started it, and then the two penalties in succession. The holding call, which prevented them from getting a first down, and then the offensive pass interference, which forced them to kick it, and then, of course, the ensuing 78-yard touchdown run by Kelvin Martin, which opened it up. And, of course, the interception leading to the go-ahead touchdown for Boston College. And now Syracuse is in control. Elsewhere, Florida over Kentucky. Florida up there battling around in the uh, ratings also. But Syracuse came in at 13. They have a chance now to become a 7-2 ball club. And ironically, after last year's loss to Syracuse, Boston College was 7-2. They'll end up that way here today also. That's Doug Flutie, and all he's doing is running out that clock. He gets the first down, too, and that means they can't really stop it. They'll stop, the clock will stop to move the sticks, but it'll start again, and it's a first down. The game is basically over. Flutie with 83 yards rushing, so when he's had to go to the rush, he has shown he can do that also. 10 carries, 83 yards. It hasn't been his usual passing day, but hey, what the heck? He's shown another reason why he probably deserves the Heisman Trophy. He not only passes and engineers a high-flying offense through the air, but he's done a good job on the ground. 
and today their rushing totals have been close to 300 yards. 15 seconds, no timeouts remaining for Syracuse. What a battle by Syracuse, though. They led it at halftime, 13-10. The mistakes, a couple turnovers, and a break here or there, and 60,000 plus are heading home happy here at Foxborough. Flutie with a game ball, and a very, very fine ball game indeed. We certainly want to thank all the people who have assisted us today. Boston College SID Reed Oslin, Syracuse SID Larry Kimball, my statistician Dick Leip, our spotters John Kane and Jim Foley. They've been sensational. And the final score before we return to a wrap-up, the BC Eagles 24, Syracuse 16. Well, with the final score here, Boston College 24, Syracuse 16. We're still here at Sullivan Stadium. A little post-game wrap-up, and I want to alert you to the fact that I think, Eddie, we've got uh, a bowl game situation for these Boston College Eagles, and uh, it's about a million and a half dollar win for Boston College, and Bill Flynn, the athletic director for this university, will have to make a very difficult decision. Does he go and listen to country and western music at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, or does he head for the jazz of New Orleans and a little bit of uh, French cuisine in the French Quarter? Well, it sure looks that way, Kyle, <laughs> because right now, the way things stack up, this team is uh, bowl bound for sure, and an opportunity for them to go, uh, I say, any one of a number of places to take their pick. I was certainly interested today in the way this game developed as far as, as far as Boston College was concerned. They took advantage of mistakes, which is something that Syracuse has not done a lot of in the past. And those mistakes in the second half cost Syracuse the possibility of winning this ball game. I think you're right. Uh, it was the short punt early that set up one uh, scoring situation. It was the interception that set up another one. And uh, we want to remind you to join us again next week here on USA for our continued coverage of college football 84 as we go to Waco, Texas, where the Longhorns of Texas meet the Bears of Baylor in a match that uh, could very well decide the Southwest Conference Championship. College Football 84 was brought to you by Coors, the clean, refreshing taste that says the best of the Rockies is yours. Coors to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil, you can't get better engine protection. And by Levi's Action Slacks and Action Jeans. Once again, the final score, Boston College 24, Syracuse 16. For Kyle Rowe Jr., this is Eddie Doucette. We certainly hope you enjoyed, and so long from Foxborough, Massachusetts. The executive producer of USA Sports is Jim's Rake. Our producer, Gary Dubin. Our director, Billy McCoy. The associate producers, Stephen Fetter, Kevin Landy, and Tim Rapley. Our assistant director, Grace Palmer. Our director of sports programming, Marty Brooks. Our production coordinator, Barbara Travers. And our executive in charge of production, Dick Ross. a good one in Foxborough. College football 84 has been a presentation of USA Sports.